If you're wondering how we pack for a month long trip on a 28 foot boat that is very weight sensitive, you lay everything out on the bed you think you may need and then you take things away one by one until you look at it and you're like, okay, that's not enough, but that's what we're gonna have to bring. So that's what I've been doing, laying it out, taking it away. Like I don't need all of these, but I like them. Definitely don't need all of these, but they're my favorite. So now I'm just gonna go around in a circle from every pile and take things away. <laughs> Grocery shopping to go stay on the boat for a while is never easy, but it's extra difficult knowing that our refrigerator space is like super, super limited and that we have to keep everything light. So wish me luck today. I wrote my list. I have my meals planned out and everything we need for the meals and then additional, obviously breakfast and lunch stuff. So it's gonna be a long time in the grocery store. Okay, we spent a total of $328. And if you are watching this and thinking, Sierra, you are such a hypocrite, you are using plastic bags and you tell us not to, it is because I needed trash bags for the boat to fit in a tiny little um, trash can. So I figured transport them and then reuse them. It's so easy to maneuver because it's so light. Hey, on the boat. Come on, right here, come on, come on. Good girl. Good girl. I'll bring the boat back and we'll load up. So we had already loaded the motor on the trimaran um, and we hadn't put the dinghy on yet. So Billy's just gonna row back. He's going to then grab the trimaran, move it um, to this public little park area and we'll load everything up. It's just a little easier than putting it in a cart and then walking the long, long, long dock all the way down. This is right next to the car, so it'll be super easy. We'll pack up and then we'll go to the fuel dock, get fuel and water, and then we are ready to go. Woohoo! All right, what do you think? Full time on this boat for a month? All of our stuff. All right, you guys, we're getting ready. We're going on a long trip with this boat. We're gonna do the whole Florida loop. We'll tell you all about that trip and what it involves and everything. But first, we gotta load up all our supplies. We're gonna be on the boat for about a month, which honestly is probably like on the longer side of what most people would be doing in terms of cruising with this boat. Of course, you could live full time on this boat if you really wanted to. I think most people would probably, maybe they do a month in the Bahamas on the long end and on the short end, maybe more like weekend and overnight type stuff or just racing. So we're getting all loaded up. Sierra went grocery shopping. We got a ton of supplies. Uh, we're gonna see where we can fit everything. Sierra organized the inside of the main hole really, really well. So I'll show you all of that or she'll show you all that in a little bit, like how we organized it, what we brought for this month long cruise. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm really excited to test it out and finally get back on the living on a boat full time. And we've missed it. Oh, we've missed it so much. So it's gonna be it's gonna be so much fun living full time. Hopefully, get some kiteboarding in, some really good sailing. And uh, yeah, day number one, loading up, preparing, and then heading west along the Okeechobee Waterway. This is got everything loaded up. Sierra's just organizing everything, putting it down there in its spot. We're gonna go to the fuel dock right now and just top off on fuel and water, and then we'll be on our way. We have uh, the main fuel tank right here is three gallons, and then we have two two gallon containers. So what do we have? Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gallons total. I, these are two plus. Seven gallons total, but I'm curious how much that three gallon tank will actually, how far it'll get us its range. So we'll top it up 
and then we will see how far we get before we run out basically in full-on cruising mode. All right, I'm gonna cast off the lines and we'll head over to the fuel dock. How does it feel to be traveling on a boat again? We're off on a new adventure. Feels good. Can we, we do it? A month on the 28 foot trimaran? With the three of us. With the three of us? I think we got it. Piece of cake. We've had some breakfast. What do you think, Jenny? You ready? So on our way over to the west coast of Florida, we're gonna be passing through, I think, six or so locks. Uh, under a few bridges. The shortest fixed bridge is, I believe, 49 feet. We're something like 45, 46 feet above the water, so we'll be fine. Uh, but even if we weren't, worst case scenario, we actually could just tilt the mast back on this boat, which is pretty cool. Like, if we need an extra five or 10 feet or something. Or, I mean, theoretically, you could tilt it all the way back and go under the bridge. We didn't bring the rear mast stand, so we won't really want to do that, but we could. We'll be going through one lock today, possibly, or just getting to it. We'll see. We'll see where we make it. And in the middle of this waterway, we're going to be going through Lake Okeechobee, which is the biggest lake in Florida, and we'll probably be able to do some sailing in there. So we'll see what the weather's like, see what the wind is like, and hopefully we can sail in Lake Okeechobee. That'd be pretty cool. We should have brought our bass fishing rod. We just went under I-95 right here. There's the turnpike right above us. St. Lucy Lock, St. Lucy Lock, telling us a tool. Lock what? St. Lucy Lock just requesting to pass through whenever the next opening is, uh, westbound. Roger that, Captain. I'm just going to drop down to meet the founder here in a little while. Uh, just stand by with you that green light and bring you up on your port side. For those of you guys who don't know what a lock is, a lock is basically something that helps boats go through to get to another body of water with a different water level. Lake Okeechobee is the other body of water, and I think the water level is higher. Um, and basically all the waterways in Florida are controlled by humans, by the Army Corps of Engineers, and, and they kind of regulate it. The boat in there looks like it's way higher than this water level right now, so I think we'll probably get locked in. So we'll go into the lock, the water level will rise inside the lock nice and steadily, and we'll just kind of go up, and then they'll open the other side of the lock and we'll go out. And without that lock, they won't really be able to control the water level back and forth. So like in an extreme scenario, it would basically be like a river flowing out from Lake Okeechobee. Um, but they want to be able to have some water in there or control the water level or whatever. So that's why we have a lock. Did that make sense? Yeah. It's, we're not going into Lake Okeechobee yet, but there's multiple locks. That was the only part that was kind of confusing. Yeah, there's two locks to get to Lake Okeechobee. This one and then one right before the lake and it just kind of helps steadily get you to the next water level. Like stairs, kind of. You'll see. All right, the other boats are just coming out of the lock now. It's our turn to enter as soon as that light turns green.
All right, we're in the lock. We're about to go up. He said we're going up 13 feet. So the water's gonna enter through the lock much slower than it would if the lock was completely open. It's just gonna kind of rush through here through a crack like this big instead of, you know, the opening that big. The locks are closing. Almost closed. I'm just going to pull this line in as we raise up to keep us tight against the wall here. All right, we are at our new water level. The locks are starting to open. We'll get ready and as soon as they're open, we'll head out of here, 13 feet higher. Just like that, we're out. Here's the other boats waiting, heading eastbound, waiting for the lock to open and for them to be able to go in and go back down 13 feet to the east side. So that boat was in our Jupiter Anchorage for a long time, really. And then they had sold it and it disappeared our last trip back and we didn't know what happened to it. And there she is. What happened? Are you sure? Yes. All right, if that's true. We went 22 miles, but we did idle a ton all through the lock and all through while we were getting the boat loaded up and stuff like that. So probably like 25 miles, but we're in full cruising mode. This is the beginning of our trip along the Florida Mini Loop, also called Smuggler's Run, named after the rich history of drug smuggling through South Florida. The full loop is about 550 miles long, and most people do it counterclockwise so that when they come back up on the East Coast, they can catch the Gulf Stream current. We started here on the Okeechobee Waterway, which is about 117 miles long, and it connects the St. Lucie River on the east side with Lake Okeechobee, and then the Caloosahatchee River on the west side and then out to the Gulf of Mexico. We plan to head north for a quick little stop and then back south along the Gulf Coast and then down to the Keys, the Dry Tortugas, and then hopping east along the Keys, and then all the way back up the east coast of Florida to Stewart, where we started. We're gonna take a month to complete it. The mosquitoes came out. We made it. So we made it all the way to Mayaca. The Mayaka Lock, which is a lock that separates us, this waterway here from Lake Okeechobee here on the east side of Lake Okeechobee. I can't show you outside because as soon as we tied up to these dolphins right here, the mosquitoes started swarming us like crazy. I bought all new screens right before we left thinking like the keys can get buggy and like no seams and stuff and I'm so glad we did because we would be in so much trouble. Oh yeah, we got the whole hatch is screened up right now. All, all three hatches actually. Now we're tied up to these things called dolphins, which a dolphin is basically like a mooring ball, but like permanent. It's like, so it's a wood piling or a series of wood pilings basically that you could tie up to. So we have a stern line on one dolphin and a bow line on the other dolphin. It's just holding us right in place here. There's a catamaran right in front of us and then another small monohull sailboat in front of them. And then we got a big commercial boat or barge or something right here behind us. Show you guys in the morning. We have to be ready to go through the lock at 7 a.m. tomorrow. And the guy in front of us at, uh, on the catamaran just told us that if we don't catch the 7 a.m. lock tomorrow, they're not opening again until Tuesday. And really? Yeah. They're doing maintenance on the lock. Which, thank goodness, he told us that. And thank goodness, like... We're here. <laughs> we're here. What's today? Sunday. I'll tell you Sunday. Okay, we miss a day. So, yeah. 
Well, we're going to whip up a little food and uh, hit the hay and wake up early and make sure we hit that 7 a.m. lock. What's for dinner? Oh, one little hiccup. We forgot to bring extra denatured alcohol for the stove. It's a it's an alcohol stove here, and uh, we haven't topped it off in a while, so and we haven't used it in a while either, so hopefully we still got some alcohol in there to cook. Otherwise, what were you going to make? We're eating snacks. We're making penne alla vodka. What's the occasion? It's one year until we get married. Exactly one year away. It won't be exact for you guys. We're like maybe a week or two behind at this point. All right, let's whip up some penne alla vodka. So I'm tying some onion and garlic. I'm about to put some cream in there. Mm -hmm. This is half and half. It's supposed to be heavy cream, but they didn't have any. Alright, penne alla vodka, how'd I do? A little parmesan on top. Looks delish. Tastes delish. We didn't show them like what you did here for to prepare us for living on this boat for a month, so do you want to? Mm, can we do it when it's clean? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll show you guys tomorrow. Okay, good night.